as far as I know, uh, we're the only ones doing it in this country. This is the largest outdoor one done to date in the United States. It's one of the best things we've ever done as far as I'm concerned. And it has a noble purpose, and that's equally important. It's easy to say a number of 5,000 and something, but you don't get an impact of what that actually is until you see a, you know, a project like this and it all comes together. The Blood of Heroes Never Dies is a project that uh, history professor Clive Siegel and I were inspired by an artist named Paul Cummings who was in England. And uh, he made, and he, he and his team made one poppy for every uh, English soldier killed in World War I. And it, they were installed at the Tower of London and it was incredibly inspiring. And so Clive and I were talking, we both saw that independently. We came together and started talking and we were thinking, how can we make an impact at Richland? So we did a little research and we found that there were 5,171 Texas soldiers killed in World War I. And so we committed to making that many poppies. Uh, I usually in my courses had talked about uh, the remembrance part of World War I. Uh, which revolved around not only making monuments and things like that, but, but curiously enough, using a flower, uh, and one specifically, which was the poppy. Poppies uh, were a different flower than most in that they grew in disturbed soil. And World War I disturbed a lot of soil. Uh, the battlefields were churned into virtual wastelands, yet in the middle of all of this, uh, the first thing up were these red poppies. And um, they became the subject of a poem that was done by a Canadian doctor uh, uh, called In Flanders Field, which mentions the fact that the poppies actually grew. Uh, Jennifer Rose uh, came along with the idea. I think her and Clive um, really kind of got together and started talking about how they could take this concept, this idea from, uh, that was produced in Great Britain. Uh, they came up with this title, The Blood of Heroes, which is a line from one of the poems that relates back to the poppies uh, and the original poem in Flanders Field, which is actually represented here uh, on the wall. Uh, they wanted something that was kind of um, informational, um, something that was didactic, uh, something that kind of told the story of what the, the installation would be about. You've got ceramics, visual art, you have historian, and you have dance, all coming together with one common thread for this particular theme, the blood of heroes never dies. So finding that connection among the arts to communicate the humanness about us, who we are, how we feel, how we think, to honor those who have fought for us and sacrificed their lives. And to do that through art is very meaningful. I think that the most obvious message is that we're honoring the soldiers that were killed in World War I. We're putting up a visual symbol of all the lives that were lost. It's easy to say a number of 5,000 and something, but you don't get an impact of what that actually is until you see a you know, a project like this and it all comes together. Yeah, it's been a really, really great process. A little stressful at times, as anything on this scale would, would possibly be, but at the same time, it's well worth it because you see the, the completion of um, the projects and you're like, wow. And on being behind the scenes and not necessarily knowing, you know, how it's going to turn out, and then to see people respond to it, you know, it's just tremendous. The entire production of this project started September 4th and the poppies were installed on October 26th. So during that time, um, it was just a mass production of the, uh, all the time in the studio. I had open lab days on Fridays where volunteers could come in and work. Um, sometimes we'd have as many as, you know, 40 people in the studio working all at once. While we're doing all of this, um, planning and designing and installing. Uh, we really want the students to learn something from the process. So I think it really, even though the genesis came from uh, or was inspired by another project um, uh, really, really far away, um, Jennifer and Clive, I know, had in mind how can we get students involved. I guess the most important thing is students realizing that 
there is history out there that can be brought to life and it's meaningful. You know, it's meaningful to appreciate and honor those who have fought for our country. I opened up the studio to all faculty, all staff, all uh, students, and anyone really in the community that heard about it and wanted to come help. And so it was really fantastic to see the community pulling together and everyone was joining in for this project. The fact that we got this done in two days, like installing them outside, was amazing. We had so many, we had the science department, we had the humanities department, we had so many different, you know, departments come together. It was amazing because you could see different ages, just different people coming together for this one significant project. It was great, you know, to see it start to, you know, evolve because this has been a a couple months, a couple, two or three months, was the entire campus involved. I mean, people, Jennifer invited the entire campus over uh, to the sculpture lab and everybody got into it. And then to see all of that work, you know, actually physically installed, it was fantastic. I was there, it was a Friday. I was there with my Pastor Leffield and we were making the, the last poppies and she was like, we made it, we made it. We had 5,000 and something poppies. It was a really memorable day. In the entire war from Texas, there was one female that was killed and she was a nurse. And so um, we don't know if she succumbed to the flu while she was on the front lines or if she was actually hit by a shrapnel or what happened to her, but she did is listed as being one of the um, fatalities of the war. So we made one white poppy for her. And the really cool thing is that uh, Dr. Kay Eggleston, our president of Richland College, is a nurse. She's a registered nurse, and so she got to place that white poppy. This ceremony is a special tribute to the 5,171 brave Texas soldiers who paid the ultimate sacrifice of their lives during World War I. How fitting it is on this path of poppies that each poppy represents one life of the 5,171 lives lost. Reminding us yet again of our ultimate desire for an end to all war so that peace may prevail on earth. The other thing about this is that we're honoring all veterans. It's not just those in World War I, but it's those that serve our country from all the wars up through today, and we're thanking them for their service. Uh, my name's Lyle Digby, and uh, I was drafted in 1966. The thing I'd like to say is that uh, we're honoring veterans now of all wars, and I think the thing that is important is when you went into the service, you didn't carry any political bias with you. We're all simply going to do our duty to our country. Hi, I'm Bob Barreto. I served with the U.S. Navy from 1961 to 1966, mainly on ships in the uh, East Coast. Uh, I, was, I was very surprised that uh, we had as many volunteers who wanted to help commemorate this particular war and all the veterans in general. So I'm very pleased that the college recognizes the fact that we need to memorialize the heroes of our past who helped make this country what it is today. I like the fact that a bunch of students just got together to make all these pop poppies, which was like, I think over 5,000. So I just think it's a really nice event and it helps us remember the past. This project would not be possible without uh, collaboration with the history department. And I've been working closely with Dr. Clive Siegel been tireless in his efforts to promote the poppy and what it symbolizes. So he's going to come up and speak for just a little bit, make a few remarks to put some of this into context. Over the last several months, artists, historians, and 500 sorcerers apprentices, if you will, from all walks of life, on and off this campus, were invited uh, and have distinguished themselves uh, by assembling a humbling group of spirits. The poppies behind us, memorial flowers of World War I, called back, if you will, uh, as reminders of a century old war. It shaped our modern world, and yet it's fading from our collective memory. 
but not for long. Uh, we've taken a stand here, and it is with the goal of illuminating just these lives that Richland undertook the task of proclaiming that the blood of heroes never dies. So thanks to the army of volunteers, heart drawn to give their time and passion to 5,171 Texans who gave their lives during World War I, and who have symbolically been mustered back uh, into these blood red ranks behind me. Planted back in the soil where they once lived, loved, and were loved. In the earth of a nation that by acts of their courage, they glorified and preserved for us to live, love, and be loved in. You've got over 5,000 poppies representing those former Texans who fought in World War I. Well, we know one poppy standing alone is the individual, but when that individual becomes a part of something much bigger, then you have a powerful statement there to make. And I think that's what we've made with this particular uh, work. Um, we're starting conversations. We're um, explaining to a younger generation why it's important to um, keep this memory alive. You know, what can we learn from these wars and from these people who have sacrificed? I read about the poppy fields in this morning's Dallas Morning News, and I immediately called the ritual in our office to see if, if the display was out today so that I could come the day after Veterans Day. I, I think it's just a a wonderful display of respect for our veterans. Uh, my father, Roy Johnson, was a veteran of World War II. I remember as a child selling poppies. I think it's just magnificent. I couldn't wait to get over here today. Uh, one thing that I like to mention is that we have so many students that are at Richland that are international students. And either they came to this country themselves for the first time or their parents came for the first time. And they were so enthusiastic about doing this project. And uh, they don't have a family tie to the war itself. And they may not have a family tie to anyone who served in the American military, but they were so dedicated at doing this and overwhelmed by the power of the project and the remembrance that it has. Clive Siegel, being the historian, has done a lot of research to see you know, what other poppy installations have been done in the United States. And I think there have been a few, but they've been on a pretty small scale. So this is the largest outdoor one done to date in the United States.